Hello, welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 40 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about updatable views. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 39 of this video series. So what are updatable views? Let's understand that with an example. I have employees table here, which has got ID name, salary, gender, and department ID columns. Usually, salary is confidential information, and we don't want employees to be looking at other employees' salary details. Okay, but then there is a requirement where a single user needs to know employee details. In that case, if you grant the user access to the table, he will be able to see all rows and columns, including salary, and we don't want that. So, to avoid that, we can actually create a view which selects all the columns except the salary column. And that's what we are exactly doing here. We are creating a view called employee employees data except salary. And if you look at the select statement, it is selecting all the columns except the salary column. Okay, And then when you select data from that view, look at the result, we get all the columns except the salary column. So let's go ahead and create this view on this employees table. Let's flip back to SQL Server Management Studio. So here is the view, view employees data except salary. And if you look at the select statement, we are selecting all the columns except salary. So let's create this view. Command complete successfully, so we created the view. Refresh the views folder, and we should see the view that we have just created, employees data except salary. Now, to select data from this view, we issue the select statement the same way as we would for a table. So select star from view name. Okay, so let's execute this. And if you look at the view itself, look at this, we get the data from the view. Now, if you look at the view itself, does it really store any data? No. A view, if you look at this view, it is only a select statement, a stored select statement. So it's a virtual table, it's not a real table. So when you execute this query, the view actually gets its data from TBL employee table. So here, for this view, TBL employee is the underlying base table. Okay, now when you issue select star from view name, that view is actually going to get its data from the underlying base table because the view itself doesn't store any data. All right, so since you are able to issue a select statement against a view which in turn will get its data from the underlying base table, can you update a view which will update the underlying base table? Absolutely, that's definitely possible. So it's, it's possible to update a view, to insert data into your view, and to delete data from a view, which in turn will actually do those respective operations on the underlying base table, in this case, TBL employee. So when you update or when you insert into this view, it will actually update the underlying base table. All right, so let's look at that in action. Okay, so let's select the data from the view. So we got all this data here. Now let's update this view. So I'm updating the view update view and we are saying set name is equal to my key where ID is equal to two. So for record two, we are changing the name to my key. Currently it is Mike and we are updating it to my key. So let's update this. Command one row affected. Now let's select the data from the view. Mike should have been changed to my key. Now let's select data from the employee table and see if the underlying base table is updated. So if you look at the underlying base table, TBL employee table itself, name is updated to my key. So it's possible to update the base table using views. In this case, we call the view as updatable view. And in SQL Server, views are updatable. Okay. Now. We can also delete and insert data from a view, which in turn will obviously delete and insert data from the underlying table. Okay, so so we have all the records here from the view. Let's try to del delete record with ID is equal to two. In this case, my case record. So delete from view where ID is equal to two. So let's execute that one row affected. Let's select the data back from view and see if it's really deleted. So there's no more you know, my case record there, record with ID is equal to two is deleted. Along the same lines, we can also insert data into the view. So let's insert data into the view. 
insert into this view values and we are passing in the values. Press F. One row affected. Now let's select the data back from the view and we should see you know my case record back in there. Alright, so views are updatable. Now if you look at the view that we are creating here, this view is based on one base table, in this case TBL employee. But in reality, it is possible you can create a view based on multiple tables. Okay, so if you look at the view here, I'm creating a view. I mean, we have TBL employee and TBL department table. On both of these tables, I'm creating a view which returns to me ID name, salary, gender, and department name. So the first four columns, ID name, salary, and gender, are coming from TBL employees table, and department name is coming from TBL department table. Okay, so we are creating this view which joins employee table with department. Okay, now, if you have a view that's based on multiple tables, and when you update that view, what happens? That's what we'll be looking at now. Okay. So let's first create this view, view employee details by department. Okay, and we have spoken about this in a great detail in the previous session. So if you're new to creating views, I would strongly recommend to check part 39 of this video series. So let's go ahead and create this view now. So create a view employee details by department. So we are selecting ID name, salary, gender, and department name columns from TBL employee table joining that with TBL department on department ID column which is common between both the tables. So let's create this view now. Command completed successfully. Refresh the views folder and we should see the view that we have just created. All right. Okay, now let's select the data from the view just to make sure we get data as expected. So we get ID names, salary, gender, and department name columns. All right, so now if you look at John's record, John is currently within HR department. Now let's try to update his department to IT from HR. But before we do that, note who else is within the HR department. Along with ben, uh, John, Ben is also within HR department. So they are currently two employees, John and Ben, within HR department. Okay. Now when I issue this update statement, we are actually updating John's department to be IT department from HR department. So only this should be converted to IT. Ben should still remain in the HR department. So let's update this and see what's going to happen. One row affected. Now let's select the data back from the view. Okay, John's department is set to IT, which is good. But look at Ben's department. You know, we didn't expect this. We expected this to be HR. But then our update statement didn't update correctly. Something has gone wrong. So let's analyze why, you know, why is Ben's Ben's department name is also changed. Okay. Now obviously when we issue, no matter whether your view is based on a single base table or multiple base tables, when you update the view, it's going to update the underlying base tables. Why? Because the view itself doesn't store any data by default. We can change that default behavior using materialized views, which we'll be talking about in a later session. But by default, a view doesn't really store any data. So when you issue a select, insert, update, or delete statement, these statements are executed against the underlying base tables. Okay, so here when you updated this view, it it is actually behind the scenes underlying the uh, updating the underlying base tables, TBL employee and TBL department. So let's select data from those tables and see what's actually happening. So here we updated John's department to be HR, I mean to IT from HR, but then that also changed Ben's department to IT. Let's see what actually happened. If you look at this, if you look at the department's data, and look at this, John's department ID is 3, Ben's department ID is 3. Now when you updated, when you issue this update statement, when you say update this view, set department name is equal to IT where name is equal to John. So for John you are saying set department name is equal to IT. That means this department ID for this John's record should be changed from 3 to 1. 
Okay, but in fact, what has actually happened is when you update this query, the view incorrectly updated the department name column here. Now the view is updating, look at this, for three, which was HR before, it converted that to IT. As a result of which, all the employees who have three is showing IT now. So Ben, department ID was three, so Ben is showing it as IT. Ideally, we would we should have, I mean, when you updated this view, it should have updated the department ID to one from three. So that's exactly is what's happening here. So since it's since it updated the department name itself here and whoever is three it is showing ID for them. So here John is three, Ben department ID is three and three IT. Before this, before our update statement it was actually HR. That's why we have this incorrect update. Okay, so the conclusion, if a view is based on multiple tables and if you update that view it may not update the underlying base tables correctly. And to do that correctly, we can make use of instead of triggers. We haven't spoken about triggers yet. We'll be talking about triggers and how to use those instead of triggers to update a view correctly that is based on multiple tables in a later video session. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.